Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today is a special episode. We're welcoming Mark Whitehorn back on the line. He is president over at DPI Showcase, and he's also, I'm proud to announce, a, an officially published author in one of our business leader series of books. I'd just like to say, hey, Mark, welcome back. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me and happy holidays. All right. So uh, we got a lot to cover today. So of course, we'll be talking about the recent book release that you had with Mission Matters. We'll talk about DPI Showcase. And then also just for context for everybody watching this, we're recording this in December of 2022, soon to be 2023, a lot going on in the real estate market. And I know that uh, Mark's company, DPI Showcase, has decided to waive setup and design fees for their websites for real, real estate professionals out there. And we'll talk about that as well. They're doing their part to give back. But just to get us started, Mark, we will start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Mark, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Mark, what mission matters to you? Well, you know, I like to give back to the real estate community. You know, our company creates websites for realtors and we do lots of marketing for realtors. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, realtors are not tech people, they're salespeople. You know, they don't have to worry about HTML code or things like that. So they always, they always need a, a, an added hand, someone to guide them along when it comes to technical matters. And that's why, you know, I teach many marketing classes. I have tons of, of, of YouTube videos with marketing tips or tech tips on how to do things in order to give back to the real estate community. Now, Mark, I don't want to assume that all of our new listeners and viewers caught some of our previous work together. So maybe start off by laying the groundwork by telling us a little bit more about a DPI Showcase and how that came up. Sure. Great. So DPI actually stands for Digital Printers International. I used to own a printing company. And then one day I was at a trade show for realtors because we did a lot of work with realtors. And I ran into a young man who was a programmer who said, hey, I got this website for realtors. You want to work together on it? And the rest is history. We've kind of like transformed the printing company. I sold that many years ago. Yeah. And now what we do is we do websites for realtors and brokers mm -hmm. that are linked to the multiple listing service. Mm -hmm. And it's an, it's an sort of a comp competition to Zillow, where instead of your client going to Zillow to search for real estate, they're going to your website. And we have clients in metro areas across the country. And we've been doing this for about 18 years now. Yeah. Yeah. And when you say 18 years, I, I, and, and as we, and as what I've seen is I've gotten to know you a little bit better in your involvement in the real estate community. I mean, we just recently met in, in Miami for an event and you were headed to another event for the real estate association out there. And what does it mean for you to be part of the community and what you're doing to assist realtors and real estate professionals? And the reason I ask this question is because, you know, there's there's one thing to just offer a product or service. There's another thing to get your hands your hands dirty and to get messy and to get in the trenches and to network and to meet those that are on the front lines. Like, what does it mean for you to be part of that community? Sure. It means a lot. You know, the challenge with real estate is it's an ever-changing environment. When the pandemic hit and people were working remotely, everyone was, you know, going to buy single family homes. Yeah. So we had a shortage of inventory, which equates to a seller's market where, you know, if you're a seller, you get your price or more and it's easy to sell your house. Mm -hmm. Well, like a pendulum, it will swing to a buyer's market, which is sort of where we're heading mm -hmm. now, where you have too much inventory and now the buyers get to negotiate. The challenge for a realtor is having to switch between the two markets, between a buyer's market and a seller's market. It's kind of like baseball, you know, it, you have to know how to be on the field. You know, you're at bat one second, strike three, you're out, you run yeah. to the dugout, you get your glove and you're out in the field and you're playing defense and, you know, you make the transition. Hmm. Without, realtors need to be able to do that. And sometimes they have trouble doing it. So. We're coming off of a crazy market where we're 
you get a listing and it's sold in two minutes, with multiple <laughs> offers, because interest rates were at like 2%. And now interest rates have gone back mm -hmm. up where, as a side note, historically, interest rates were typically always around 6%. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something that we forgot. So now they need to make the transition from one market to the other. And that means changing how you do your marketing, changing how you talk to people. And what we do is we try and, and help them through classes and through tech videos, mm -hmm. make this transition from a, a seller's market to a buyer's market. I will circle back. I definitely want to circle back to what realtors should be thinking about when it comes to marketing. And as we go into this, into this market, specifically like what, what types of marketing they should be doing and also how DPI can help. But I want to take a moment here and I want to get into the book. So I'm, I'm so excited to have published you. Finally, we've been working on this book now for, I think, going on a year or so. And uh, so your, your contribution to the book was called uh, Your First Six Months. What was the inspiration behind the topic? Sure. I've been teaching classes, marketing classes and training at the Miami Association of Realtors for about 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And every so often I notice a gap, something that's missing, something that realtors need. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I create a class based on that gap to fill that need. Yeah. So we cre I created this class, Surviving the First Six Months as a Realtor. It's now an accredited class through the, uh, the Florida Department of Business uh, Regulation. Mm -hmm. And um, what it does is it teaches realtors first to step back and realize what it means to run their own business. Mm -hmm. People, you know, as an employee, you, you're used to, you know, taking orders. You walk, you show up for work at 9 a.m., your boss gives you your tasks for the day, you go and do them, and then you go home and, and that's it. As an entrepreneur, as a business person, it's different. You're on the clock 24 seven, you never rest. And those people that can make the transition, those people that can do a business plan, those people can, can understand marketing, how to get clients, those people who can grasp whatever technology they can, they succeed. So the, the whole class is about how to change your reference, how to change mm -hmm. how you think, and then how to conduct business mm -hmm. as a realtor. So you, you go through a lot in this and there's a lot of chapter. We'll, we'll unpack some of it, but prepare your frame of mind, make sure others take you seriously. You don't, you need to rely on your contacts. Don't procrastinate. Be ready for the day. Embrace tedium and routine. When I look at some of these, some of the tips and some of the things that you gave as guidance, I'm like, Obviously, these things all work for real estate and real estate professionals, but to me, they work for entrepreneurship and just and just individuals that are that are really out there with a mission and a goal they're trying to hit. So I'll start with one that just stuck stuck out to me. So prepare your frame of mind. What does that mean for you? Sure. So as an employee, mm -hmm. you've got your employer to rely on. Yeah. You know that every Friday you get a paycheck. Yeah. You know that your taxes get taken out. Mm -hmm. You know that you have an office to show up to. Mm -hmm. When you become an entrepreneur, all that is out the window. Yeah. You don't hustle, you don't get a paycheck. Yeah. If, if you have to set up the office, if you have employees, you have to worry about doing payroll, paying tax, health insurance, all these other things. Mm -hmm. Now, Real estate provides people with a simple entree to being an, an independent person mm -hmm. without having to go through a lot of the, the setup that someone who is, let's say, setting up a factory or a store. Yeah. They can easily get into the business. You know, you take a course, you take a test, you sign up with a broker and you're in business. That's it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to set up an office or things like that. Yeah. But what you have to do is you have to learn how to drum up business. Mm -hmm. That's the key. You're, a, you're now a salesperson and you have to spend 10%, 15% of your time mm -hmm. finding clients. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest challenges is you have to convince your friends and family <laughs> that you're doing this for real. I mean, yeah. you know, one famous story I have is I was sitting with two women, one of the two friends of mine, one of them was a broker owner. The other one, she came and she says, Oh, I just got my real estate license. And the woman who's the broker owner, she and I looked at each other and rolled our eyes because we knew 
you know, it wasn't happening. And yeah. sure enough, this third woman never got business cards, yeah. never did any marketing, didn't set up a website, didn't set up mm -hmm. social media. And within a year, she was gone. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the trick is knowing how to be self-motivated and how to go out and get the business. Where do you find a lot of the times, and I know based on teaching this class and just your industry and, and your, your, your tenure in the industry in general, going on 20 years just with this particular, with DPI showcase, where do you find a lot of people make the mistake in that first step? Like, obviously this woman went into this and, and I'm not judging her or, you know, there'll be good, there'll be variations, but obviously she didn't go into this with the idea that, Hey, I just want to just try this. There had to be, or most people, I should say they they're, they're serious about it in the beginning, but where do you find they kind of fall off? Well, the first misconception is that they're going to sign up with a broker, typically a large brokerage, and they're going to give them leads. Mm. And the reality is you don't get any leads and any leads yeah. they do give you, those are the bottom of the barrel. You know, the good leads are going to the top producers, the ones yeah. who know how to hustle and, and close a deal. Yeah. But you're, you're not getting anything. And then you have to realize that all the other realtors in your office, they're your competition. Mm. So it's not like you can walk over to one realtor and say, hey, help me out. They're going to like, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. And, and then a lot of times in these large companies, the brokers mm -hmm. don't even know who you are. Yeah. The, the biggest challenge I find is one of communication. Mm. A lot of people don't know how to answer their phones. Mm. It's crazy. Oh, I don't know that phone number. Well, it might be a new client. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I say it all the time, I say, answer the phone. If it's a solicitation, do what I do. Just hit the red button and hang up. Don't even yeah. talk to them. Yeah. Or they don't know how to check their emails. Emails mm -hmm. have become a huge burden. You know, with a, we get a lot of spam. Mm -hmm. You have to check your spam folder. You have to check your regular incoming folder and you have to do this constantly. Yeah. And so the, the, the trick with closing a deal mm -hmm is first getting in touch with the person who's trying to give you business. Mm -hmm. You have a 15 minute window from the time you got that lead to the time you can contact that person. 15 mm -hmm. minutes, that's it. Wow. You know they're sitting in front of their computer, you know you have their attention, mm -hmm. you're gonna call them immediately and you're gonna say, they're gonna say to you, wow, that was fast. <laughs> If you wait a couple of hours, you know, they could be out running errands, picking up the kids, mm -hmm. making dinner, you know, doing whatever. Yeah. You lost them. Yeah. And, and a lot of realtors, a lot of salespeople in general just don't realize about that 15 minute window. Mm. Yeah, I want to also circle back to something else that you mentioned, and that was to make sure that in both the writing and your comments a moment ago, and that's to really make sure that people take you seriously. And I feel like even in entrepreneurship, like it just in general, outside of real estate, but that idea of like, I'm going to start a new business or, you know, whatever, a side business, another, another source of income or another profit center, right? Like, how do you find that people like, and obviously this would be different, but how do you find that you go about doing this to make sure? Cause again, circling back to that woman, like she, I'm sure she was excited, had all these like hopes and dreams of making it, you know, in real estate, but yet I'm guessing that many other individuals in her network probably maybe looked at her kind of the same way too. Like, oh my, okay, you got your license now what, right? Sure. Yeah. There's a lot of people who do that. The, there is a statistic out there. 85% of all realtors sell one or less house a year. Mm. You know, they'll do a, they'll do a little deal or something. They'll make a few dollars, you know, it pays for, you know, someone's braces and they're as happy as can be. The first thing you need to do when you're setting up your business as a realtor is you need to have an online presence. Yeah. The first thing you need is a proper website. People can see that you're a professional mm -hmm. that people can go to, to search for real estate, as opposed to going to Zillow or realtor.com. Mm hmm the next thing is your social media. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say, no, 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 Instagram. And I say Facebook. Facebook mm -hmm. is where it's at. Yeah, it is. If you look at the stats, you know, Instagram goes for a much younger audience. Mm -hmm. plus it doesn't allow you to have proper communication. You can post pictures and, you know, and hashtags and things like that, but it doesn't give you everything you need. You need to do both. You need yeah. to do Facebook and Instagram 
you need to show people that you're alive in Instagram, that you're doing things. But you need to set up a proper business page in Facebook, a proper business page in Instagram, proper business page in LinkedIn. Hmm. And then people will go, wow, this person's taking it seriously. Yeah. And then you need to do something simple. Post. <laughs> Come on, Mark. You're making it seem too easy here. Really? <laughs> you know, it, it's a challenge. What we did at DPI, we saw that this was like a weak link. So we created a system where we automatically blog for our clients and automatically post it on their social mm -hmm. media and then automatically send out a weekly email e-newsletter to all their clients. So this way they don't have to think about it. Yeah, but yeah it, it makes a big difference. The, the first tranche of people you need to go after, mm -hmm. I always say, are the people in the contact list on your phone. Yeah. Adam, you, I, if I asked you to open your phone and scroll down to the bottom of your contact list, you probably have 2000 people in there. Oh yeah, for sure. And there, there are people, you know, the average person has 500 to a thousand mm -hmm. and the, that's low hanging fruit. You need to yeah. say to them, Hey, you know, send them a text, by the way, I just got my real estate license. Here's my website. Here's mm -hmm. my social media. You know, if you need anything, let me know. You need to go yeah. after these people. You need to show them that you're doing this professionally. Mm -hmm. And so you, you already answered another one of my questions and I'm just kind of shocked to hear you say this, but I wanna make sure that I, I got it right. So you're telling me that there's realtors out there that you know they go into business and, and, and they, don't, they don't have a website, is that right? Like that still happens, that's still a thing. I feel like we all need a website, right? Yeah, it, it's true. I mean, first thing is Google, you know, people are going to mm -hmm. Google, you know, you may not show up on page one, but if someone Googles your name, you need to show up mm -hmm. properly. The worst thing a realtor can do is have their clients go to do research for real estate mm -hmm. on places like Zillow or realtor.com. Cause they're competition. Maybe, I mean, <laughs> like there's a lot of other, there's a lot of noise there, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you're seeing other realtors there, other realtors mm -hmm. advertising, you know, and premier agents in Zillow <clears throat> spending a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month. They mm -hmm. answer their phones. Oh yeah. They follow up on leads. So you, you don't want your clients going there because mm -hmm. you're basically advertising other realtors, your competition. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then I always, and then I have to think about it from the, from the traffic standpoint, right? Like why, why are you going to send traffic to somebody that's not your, your website, right? Like, why would you do that when, especially if you're trying to build up your social media and all those other things, like your website really serves as that hub, right? Absolutely. What people do today, especially millennials, because I have two sons who are millennials mm -hmm. and while you're talking, they've got their phone in front of them like this. And yeah. what are they doing? How rude are they? What are they doing? They're fact checking you. They're Googling you yep. in front of your face. <laughs> I, I tell my kids all the time. I say, listen, let me finish what I'm saying before you tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the rule in our house. You can call me an idiot later, but let me finish what I'm saying. All right. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that shift quite some time ago when I was still managing money and, you know, previous career and I, and in my office. And I remember people pulling out their phone when I'm talking to them and pulling up and checking like things and just checking the website, checking my LinkedIn, like all these different things while I'm still having the conversation. It took me a minute to catch it. I'm like, oh, they're looking, they're looking at my LinkedIn. They're looking at all these other things like while I'm with them. And uh, so, so the, the interesting thing to me though, is that, okay, so if, if all, many of our behaviors are like that, then why wouldn't you think that other people are doing the same thing to you, right? It's kind of like reviews don't matter. Yes, they do. You make buying and purchasing decisions off of reviews. So why don't you think that the individuals that are going to do business with you are considering doing business with you are doing the same thing? Absolutely. We do it all the time. Yeah. yeah. My, you know, before we go out to a restaurant, my wife is, you know, checking the reviews. And I'm like, but there's a restaurant right in front of us. No, 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 I don't like the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so we're driving a mile away. Yeah, that's 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 the way of today's world. Yeah. And, so, uh, so one of the other ones that I, one of the other tips that I have to pull out from the book, because when I saw this, I was like, this isn't probably a popular message, but it's one that many need to hear. And it's kind of, I would even say counterculture to what we're used to nowadays. So embrace tedium and routine. What does that mean? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Running a business is not easy. 
Yeah. Okay. There are certain things that you have to do on a regular basis in order to make sure that the ship is in the sailing in the right direction. And a lot of it is boring, tedious work and you have to do it on a regular basis. You know, I, I, I get up at six in the morning. Mm. That's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. And I, between six and seven 30, I get more done than some people get in an entire day. Yeah. Because once nine o'clock hits and you know, the bell rings and the phone starts ringing and all the other things happen, you can't get things done. Yeah. And then at night it's just, you know, you have family, you know, and you don't want, you don't want to do all those things at night. Mm -hmm. So you have to get into a routine to do things on a regular basis. You want to do social media, you have to post on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Great, do it. Get it done at six in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. Post something of relevance, share it to people. Yeah. And it gets boring. It really gets boring. Yeah. But successful people know how to kick themselves in the in the butt and get it done. Great words of wisdom there, Mark. And I and I get it. The the tedium of, of execution and doing it over and over and over again. So for that realtor or that entrepreneur, what whomever it is that's there making that sales call over and over and over again, maybe not getting the the best result or having that high of closing the sale daily, depending on the business, right? Then um, you, you still have to because that that constant action over time is really what's going to build the results. So when I saw that I'm like, okay. And, that, and now that I've gotten to know you a little bit better, I'm like, good job, Mark. <laughs> I, I get the messaging and it's true. And we need to hear it more often for more, for more successful entrepreneurs. <laughs> and there's no one to, to remind you of that. Yeah. It's not like you can call your broker and say, what should I be doing now? Go knock on doors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So uh, let's, uh, I mentioned we'd circle back to PI showcase and really what you're doing with, especially with this relief program and, and waiving design fees and also setup fees. So, so first off, what brought that decision about? Like we're going into, into, you know, 2023. Sure. So it started actually with COVID yeah. when, when the pandemic, pandemic hit and we were in lockdown, you know, it was like the world took its was holding its breath, like what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the real estate industry, you know, realtors were having a hard time with cash flow. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, fine. I need to give back. Mm -hmm. I, I need to help people because if they succeed, then I succeed. So I'm going to do whatever it takes for them to succeed. Mm -hmm. I don't want there to be a revolving door where a realtor comes into the business. You know, they get their website, they set everything up. And then like six months later, they're gone. And then they call me up and say, Hey, Mark, uh, shut it down. I'm, I'm, you know, now flipping burgers. Yeah. So that's, that's where that came about. We were going to discontinue it because, you know, the COVID, you know, yeah, it's around, but it's no longer mm -hmm. what it used to be as far as, you know, life and death and things like that. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden we hit this recession in real estate and you know realtors are having another challenge with um you know making business doing business yeah. year to year you know sales are down you know like 30 percent or so mm. uh, it's been consistently down quarter after quarter i don't know where the bottom is going to hit i'm hoping we're near that mm -hmm. but i don't have a crystal ball we'll see what happens at the end of january we should have some new statistics mm. So in order to help realtors out, to give them the tools they need to succeed, we said, all right, let's get them in as simply as possible. Mm. We charge a monthly 59 a month for the website. They don't get charged immediately. That's like a week after it goes live as the first charge and it's paid month by month. Yeah. So there's no burden on a yearly contract. So we get them in as easily as possible. So this way they, they can mm. succeed. And then we take it a step further. Once their website is set up, we set up a Zoom meeting with our trainer mm. who shows them how to use things on the site, which is pretty simple. But then we also look at their social media, mm -hmm. make sure it's set up prop, make sure we link it to automatically post there, give them tips on what to do, how to make friends, how to post. So this way they have a guideline as to, or, you know, where to go and what to do. Mm. And, and wait a minute, did you say all that for $59 a month? Yes. 
Oh, come on. <laughs> that, I mean, that that's that's a steal. And when you look at, you know, the fact that they're not even having to pay for the design fees and they're getting a coaching call out, that's a pretty big deal. What kind of, just to get a feel for this, what type of realtors are you working with? So across the board, right? Commercial, residential, this is going to be a showcase. Like give us a little bit more about the kind of the features of the site and what they can expect. Sure. So what happens with a lot of new realtors is they typically say, oh, I'm going to go with a big firm. And yeah. they sign up with a large firm and they're like a minnow in the ocean. They're, they're just gone. Yeah. And then if they survive that first shock, they usually end up signing up with another broker who's a smaller, a more, more sizable company that, that, that is more friendly. Mm -hmm. And those are the realtors we work with. We mm -hmm. also work with brokers, not the large, big companies, but the medium-sized brokerages mm -hmm. who uh, want to provide things to their agents, tools mm -hmm. to their agents to succeeding. And then there's a new trend that's coming on, which is pretty interesting. There's a lot of realtors who go and get their broker's license. Mm -hmm. They open their own brokerage and they have no agents. Mm -hmm. They just do their own thing. They're as happy as can be. They don't have to answer to anyone. They have their own book of business, their own clients, and they're happy. Invariably, I'll, I'll get a new client on the phone. I'll talk to them. I say, are you a broker or a realtor? I'm a broker. Okay, great. How many agents do you have? And sheepishly, they say none. Mm. And I say, well, I have tons of clients like that. They say, yeah. You do? You're kidding. I said, no, it's the biggest trend. A lot of people are getting their broker's license and they just do their own thing. It's great. Well, Mark, I just have to say it has been great having you back on the show. I'm, I'm thrilled about the announcement that you're also going to be waiving fees for your for your new clients over at DPI Showcase. And of course, excited to continue promoting this new book with you. But that being said, I have to ask, so what's next for you as we go into 2023? What's next for you? What's next for the business? Oh, sure. You know, I was just on the on Skype with my programmer. Mm. talking about new features and new plans for the first quarter of 23. Yeah. What we do is we create automated, some people call it AI systems. Mm. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. Sorry, <laughs> not going there. So it's, but we're, we're going to be rolling out some, some, some good improvements in the first quarter of the year. Awesome. Well, uh, definitely have to get those updates from you when you can tell me. But for now, again, great having you back on the show. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. I sure did. If you did, then don't forget, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Mark, as always, pleasure having you back. Thanks again. Great seeing you again. Thanks. Have a happy new year.